Hi, in this video, we're gonna learn how to create compound components in React. Let's say that we have a product car component and we want to use this component obviously in multiple places in our application. Maybe we want to create a preview version of this component or a slight variation of the same component. So let's say that on different version of this component, we want to put the price on top. And also let's say on preview mode, we want a high description. For both of these use cases, we may introduce the flags like price on top and show description. So what follows this approach is adding multiple if statements and conditionals inside of your product car component, which increases the complexity and decreases readability of your component. So let me show you a better way to achieve this. Code with Sloba. And here on this product card component, I want to show you how you can give more flexibility to your components. So here on the right side, you can see that we have this product card and we are passing this title, Nike Air, we're passing the image, we're passing in the category, men's shoes, we're passing description and the price. All of these properties. So this is the usually case scenario when you're creating a component like this. And inside of the product card component itself, we created components for all of these pieces. We are receiving all of these properties and you're passing them in as a children to all of these components. And this works as expected. There's no problems or issues with that. But let's say that we want to use product card on multiple places in our UI. Let's copy our component. And let's say that we get a request from a designer that we want to show a preview of the product card. So in that case, we would probably need to, let's say, hide description and price. So what we usually do is we introduce new flags. We introduce something like show price and we say false. Also, we might get a request to let's switch the order of certain elements. Let's say that we want to hide the price and set the description to be on top. So we would again introduce another flag and let's say description on top. And we would say true. So as you may see, as we may run into multiple versions of the same component, we may start adding multiple properties more and more. And with these properties, we are adding the if statements and conditionals inside of our car component. And we are increasing the complexity, which is not optimal once you start adding multiple use cases. There is a better way to handle this. So let me show you how we can use compound pattern to fix this issue because we want to give more flexibility when creating this product card. You have all the pieces or all compounds to create this component. So you need to be able to make it more flexible. So let's go to our product card and let's see how we can implement this. The first important thing which you need to understand is that the functions are just objects in JavaScript. So what it means is that we can add new properties to functions like product card or components. So let's add all of these components as properties to our product car component. So how we do that is using the dot notation. So let's say product card dot image is equal to our product card image component. And we can do this for all of the other components. So let's say product card dot title is equal to product card title, but let's make sure that this is uppercase. Then product card dot description is equal to product card description. The next one is product card dot category is equal to product card category. And we're basically creating new properties on our product card component. And the last one is product card dot price. Product card dot price. Like so. And next, instead of passing all of these properties, we only need children. Like so. And now we don't want to hard code all of these components inside of our component. And I just want to remove them. And I just want to render children like so. And now we can go to our app component 
and there's one interesting fact that you can see so let me just open up the closing tag of the product card like so and what is interesting here if we just type in product card inside of the product card itself let's say product card and we just type in a dot you can see that we have all these properties available to it so we're actually getting this smart autocomplete suggestions that we have all of this inside of the context of the product card itself so instead of passing these properties here we're going to use all the components that are passed to our product card component so these are compounds to create this product card so let's say for the title we want to use product card dot title and we want to pass in as a children this my care title and you will see in a second why this is powerful so for the second one we want to set product card dot image and as an image we want to set a source like image and you can even get alt attribute as well like like then for the second one or the third one actually we want to set product card dot category and for this one let's use this man should string and we can remove the ones that we already created the next one is product card description and here let's pass in this description of our shoes and for the last one is the price product card dot price and let's just take in the price put it inside here and let's remove the price from here so now let's say that we have exactly the same scenario in like in introduction so we want to duplicate our product card and let's say on this second place we only want to show like preview of the product let's say that we want to hide the title and even like the shoes uh, category and the price so what we can do is we could just easily just remove all of these pieces like so and if we save we get only the preview we don't need to send any properties or flags but not just that so let's say that we want to switch order of certain elements so let's say that we want to switch we want to set the price to be below the title like so here you go and you see how this granular is and what flexibility you're getting with that but there's one thing left that we need to fix so let me just remove this product card and let me just save this and if you go to product card description component you can see that on the previous implementation we have this is selected flag being passed in so if we select our card we can see the description if it's not selected we cannot see the description but this is not being implemented at the moment what this would mean is that we need to add additional property here is selected to our product card description component which is not ideal so using the compound pattern usually we use context api in order to make this more granular and that we are not passing unnecessary properties to our child components so let's do that inside of the product card component so let's import create context on top from react and let's just initialize the context so let's name the context as card context and we just call our create context function and make sure to export it because we want to use it inside of this child components so now we need to use the provider let's just wrap our component with card context dot provider and we want to pass in the value which is this is selected inside of the object obviously and now let's just wrap our entire component with the provider and let's save this so how this works basically is that we are managing the state inside of our parent card product card component and then we're accessing the states in our child components so now let's go to our product card description and instead of getting this is selected from the property we want to use use context so let's import first import use context 
from React and we want to import our card context. Card context. And now instead of getting is selected from the property itself, we want to get it from is selected from our context. So just call the use context and pass in the card context. And there you go. And now you can see if you go to a product card and click on it and make it active, we get our description here. And at the same time, if we click again, we get it hidden. Another thing which I like about this compound pattern is that you only import this one component, but you get access to all of these child components from it. And that's how you can use compound pattern to make your components much more flexible and to make them much more simpler actually, without using necessary flags and conditional statements to make different variations of the same component. And if you want to support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that I'm doing, feel free to check out patreon.com codebitsloba to get full access. See you there. Well, that's all for this React video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more React tutorials, click here.